Hello Vikings and welcome back to episode 9 of the Valheim Guide where today we're going to be talking all about serpents. So we're actually going to go off and uh, hunt a serpent or two today and look at how we kill them, different ways we can do that. And the reason we want to do this is we want the serpent drops that we can get from them. We actually want to get the uh, serpent meat which is really good for food, particularly early on in the game. It can be very useful as you'll see later on. And also these serpent scales are very useful for the uh, serpent shield which again, early game, very very useful shield to have. So uh, first thing we're going to do is get ourselves prepared and uh, we're going to be going out on the boat a lot today but not this boat right here we're gonna upgrade to the long ship from all the iron we got in the last episode so we can do that in a moment what i'm gonna do first is just go ahead and crash this boat get all the materials back from it then we're gonna jump straight into today's episode hunting the serpent incidentally if you're ever doing this yourself to get materials back from a boat what i recommend is you sail it as fast as you can right onto land and then you destroy it from there sailing it into the land will do some damage but also then when you uh, do the rest of your damage with your axe you'll actually be able to uh you know get all the drops more easily because they'll be in the shallow water so uh, yeah just a good way of going about about that okay so we destroyed our boat and one way to check that you got everything from it is to try to build it again so you see here long ship i have all the materials i need apart from the workbench which means i got everything back from it and as you can see getting some of that stuff back like the 30 fine wood the 80 bronze nails it is actually worth doing so i do recommend that you do that rather than just leaving the boat in a dock for decoration uh, unless you have a lot of those materials now first before we do anything else we are going to name the two boar that i have here so uh yeah the boar all died but now they are back so i thank you so much to everybody who's just named so many of you did and there were so many great names out there but the two that i quite liked what we're going to go for today uh, is if we can shift an e we're going to go for boris because who doesn't love a dad joke on this channel right let's be honest <laughs> and also um oh no don't punch him um e there we go uh we're gonna call this one Pumba because i love the reference to the lion king and i just thought i had to do that now when we get more war going on i will use some more of your guys names thank you so much for suggesting so many but for now boris and Pumba, guys so there we go hopefully these ones stay alive a little bit longer that wouldn't be too difficult to be fair but yeah i'll try and do a better job looking after these so before we find the serpent what i'm going to do is try to find uh, a leviathan and get the chitin from it in order to make an abyssal harpoon now this is not uh, necessary for you to fight the serpent and i will show you some uh, ways later different ways you can fight it some with and some without the harpoon but i just kind of like to do it and i see it as a bit of a natural progression through the game so if you're going to go and do the uh, this way what i recommend is first thing is to upgrade your iron pick a little bit and the reason for that is the better pick you've got the more uh, chitin you'll get each time you're on the leviathan them before it sinks down under the second thing is get foods with really good stamina so i've got the muck shake here which is one of my favorite items in the game because of that 50 stamina and uh, then i also have uh, the queen's jam with 40 and the uh, carrot soup with 45 so i'm gonna have really good stamina again this means i won't be stood on the leviathan waiting around before i can swing my uh, pickaxe again plus if i get a little bit stuck at the end when he's sinking i need to get back to my boat then i'll be all good um so what i'm going to do though is i am going to go and make the long ship and uh, we're going to do that first so in order to make the long ship uh we can see over here these are the things that we need this will just make my ocean exploration a little bit safer and also a little bit faster. So I'm going to do that, sail around until I find a leviathan, and then we'll come back and look at how we mine the kiting in the best way possible. Okay, guys, here's what we've been looking for. This is the leviathan. Now, uh, these are not going to be hostile creatures, but they will uh, sink after a while and go down into the water, so you do need to be careful. So we're going to wield our pickaxe nice and ready. We get this boat very close to the leviathan to speed things up when we need to make our hasty escape as they start to go down. And uh, here we go. So we're going to just like get it nice and close. I could probably jump from here on. Lovely job. Okay, so up here, this is what we're here for, the Abyssal Barnacles. And as I said, we brought the best pickaxe possible in order to make this uh, as good as possible in terms of the chitin that we get. But uh, all you can really do is just keep smashing away at them, get as much chitin as you can, and I'll show you what happens when this guy starts to sink. Incidentally, you can see here why I wanted to go for stamina. I'm already running out of stamina, so uh, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, if you really want to go for it, you can, of course, bring some stamina mead with you. That is definitely a possibility. Um, having the rested buff, of course, is going to help you too. But yeah, that's up to you, but you can see here how much we get uh, in a second. I'll count up at the end. Okay, guys, he's made a bit of a noise. You can see he's starting to shake, which means we've got roughly 20 seconds until he starts to go down. So it gives you a good gauge of how long you've got left. I would hope to get at least one, if not both, of these last two abyssal barnacles. The issue I'm going to have is going to be with the stamina in getting back to my boat, though, so I do want to be a little bit careful. So I think I'm going to call it there, and let's start to walk, and here we go. Because obviously, if you die, it's a real pain. So, uh, yeah, we don't want that. But we did manage to get 48 chitin, which is pretty good. So let's go ahead, back in the water. Here we go. And then back on the boat. Now we're going to go home 
and look at what we can actually do with the uh, kaizen that we just got there and see whether 48 is good or not we'll have a little look at that but sometimes yeah you might need to do like a few leviathans to get everything that you want so back at base now you'll see that uh, if we go to the workbench right here there's a couple of new things that we're able to make one of them being of course the abyssal harpoon and we need 30 kaizen for that of which we obviously have enough we got 48 uh, and for the abyssal razor you need 20 so it would be a case here where we'd have to choose one or the other very close to being able to make both but uh, not quite i've actually never bothered making the abyssal razor myself i'm not saying it's like a bad thing to use and it certainly has its uses one thing i did think is it'd be really cool if they made it where you needed to use that to fill it up fish as part of the cooking process so you have more of a use in game because there are already a lot of knives anyway that's kind of besides the point what we're making right here is this right here the abyssal harpoon if we go to upgrade uh we can see over here the abyssal harpoon is not upgradable so once you've made it you are done with it and uh, here it is right here and now we're going to look at how we use that with the serpent so let's talk about serpent spawning serpents have a chance of spawning when it's either nighttime or if it's heavy rain and right now it seems to be both uh so that would mean it's 10 percent because you have five percent chance of them spawning at night five percent of chance of them spawning during heavy rain so uh, it does actually stack to 10 percent during uh, both those events so what the best bet is is to again prioritize stamina because uh if you end up falling in the water or the serpent breaks your boat or something like that having good hp is not going to be neither here nor there you're going to die to be honest so we're going to prioritize having a good amount of stamina for this now in conjunction with having the long ship and having a decent bow so a crude bow uh, sorry fine wood bow uh level two is fine for this and i've got about 100 fire arrows these are definitely not the best use i think the best arrows against the uh, serpent are actually going to be the uh, frost arrows but we're not at that stage of the game yet so i'm just taking these to do some damage to it but what my plan is is to find myself a serpent harpoon it and bring it ashore so the best way to find it is to just sail around the ocean biome during nighttime whilst it's raining or at least one of those things right if it's a heavy rain uh, or it's nighttime that's uh, when you've got the chance of it spawning but obviously the best chance during both of those things now the best way of like increasing your chances of it spawning as well is to just make sure that you are sailing around as fast as you can um, because this will increase the chance of the times it can spawn because you're going fast it might mean that you might sometimes miss one because the way that they spawn in sometimes when they spawn in game they'll spawn out of your eyesight so uh, if you are going like quickly then the chances you actually spawn it are lower however um, overall it's still a better strategy because you increase the number of spawns that you're likely to get so let's go have a sail around and see what we can find so just a couple of other things to mention uh, the serpents will only spawn in ocean by you can see right now i am actually technically still in a meadows biome so you do need to make sure that you head out even like out here you'd feel like you probably are in an ocean but you're not until it actually says you're in an ocean as far as the serpent spawning is concerned the other thing to say is serpents will of course do damage to your boat so it's a good idea to uh, set off in the best boat you have available to you which is why i went for long ship and also to repair it before you set off because if your boat uh, dies you know if it destroys the boat you're going to be in the water with the serpent and then you're going to die shortly afterwards so a couple of things to mention there we're still on a little serpent hunt so uh let's see what we can find okay guys i'm very excited because we have a serpent and it has taken me three nights in a row of trying to get one to spawn so uh he's over there somewhere i'm trying to shoot him to get him interested in us we really do not want to lose him all right he's interested here he comes now it is uh, pretty treacherous conditions here but all we're gonna do is just keep shooting at him you see how much damage there we did with just one shot that was obviously the first shot where we got a bit of a, a bonus attack there i don't think he was expecting it you know with the, the sneak ability and stuff but yeah so all i'm gonna do is just just shoot him from the boat now he's going to attack the boat all right but if i get my hammer out you can see there that's minimal damage that he's done in that one attack so this is why the long ship is so good because you're pretty safe now in a carve you should still be safe guys you should be fine if you have a bow like i've got so i've got the fine bow and it is upgraded to uh, a level two fine bow then yeah you should be good with that but uh the long ship if you can do it is obviously a better option so as you can see all i'm doing here guys is just repeatedly shooting him this is where the high stamina foods come into play and are very useful and once he's dead which he's almost about to be by the looks of things there we go okay good so let's see um what of these drops actually float so we actually picked up already some serpent meat there which is great um now i don't want to lose the boat so i just want to quickly make this boat go backwards a little bit because in this ocean we we don't want to lose things so let's go and jump in here okay and this again is where the stamina comes into play okay very good now i'm going to try and swim back onto my boat to have a look at these drops uh come on yep there we go okay great so you can see that we've got uh, seven serpent meat. Now that's actually pretty good going because I believe that the drop rate uh, for serpent meat is either six or seven that you'll get each time you kill a serpent. So we, we got the upper end of that. Now as for the serpent scales, it appears like they do still sink. I've seen different people uh, commenting on this saying that they don't. I thought they still did. And to the best of my knowledge here, from what I can see today, guys, they do still sink. So they're gone. 
As for the Serpent Trophy, uh, that is only a 1 in 3 drop rate. I don't know if one of those dropped or not, um, but we will test that later on in the game if we can get our hands on one. So that is the method of killing them if you want just the meat, and uh, the method of killing them without using the harpoon, right? We just used our bow for that. So now I need to try and find another one, and I really hope it doesn't take me three more nights, because I'm honestly lost. I don't know what to do during the day. <laughs> but if we can find another one, that'd be awesome. And then the next thing to show you is how to harpoon a serpent. So as I said, for a serpent, we want to be uh, in the ocean, right? in order to see one spawn and the uh, the storm and the uh, nighttime is the best time uh, so what we want to do though if we're going to plan on harpooning the uh, serpent is stay somewhere as close to land as we possibly can whilst we're still being in the ocean the reason for that you're going to see in a minute when I actually successfully harpoon one uh, but it takes a bit of work to get them harpooned and then drag them back to land so you're going to see all of this but when you're searching guys try and stay somewhere within a reasonable distance of some nearby land okay so I found a serpent here during the day which is very strange and I was not expecting this, but what I'm going to do is just have a look around here, and it looks like we are unfortunately going to need to land in a black forest, which I don't like to do, but it's got to be done. So in order to uh, get this guy to uh, you know harpoon him onto the land, here's what we want to do. We want to get our head, heady, uh, our boat, I should say, heading in the right direction. So we're going to go here, and we're going to let him do a few bits of damage to the boat in order that he keeps interest in it. So if you don't let them hit the boat every now and again, they can lose interest. We can probably go a little bit quicker than this, because uh, what I'm doing is get the boat moving a bit like this, and then I'm going to go and uh, equip my bow and get some shots fired off at this guy. We want to damage him quite a bit, to be honest, before we look to harpoon him onto the land. The reason being, you will see in a minute when we harpoon him, it can be kind of tricky. Right, let's slow this boat down a little bit. Let's get it back to move to one. Uh, yep, should be fine. Uh, I'm probably going to like be like crashing my boat into the, the land a little bit. Like That, that happens, um, but it's just kind of part of what happens, I guess. So here we go. We're going to get some good hits on him. We're heading towards the land. Uh, we might need to pick up the pace in a minute, but I do want to do more damage to him. So as long as we're fighting him, he's getting some hits on the boat and stuff, he is going to stay interested. So basically, we're going to keep doing this until we get a little bit closer to the land. Now, this, again, is where having the long ship really helps, or just having the best ship possible, at least. And actually, I'm just realizing we should probably be eating some food here now as well, get our stamina up. Again, that comes into play, and it's quite helpful at this point. So we're going to keep heading off this way. I'm just looking for a good spot to get him landed. So we just want to get him maybe in amongst those rocks up there. And he's coming a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm a little worried about how much damage the boat's taking, so I'm going to try and get there a little bit quicker now. Uh, you see the boat's on about 50% right now of its uh, initial durability. But here we go. He's he's coming, and we're almost at the land at the bit where we're going to harpoon him. Uh, so then we're going to like drag him onto land, kid him on the land, or at least in shallow water, and then we can get all of his drops that way. All right, so now we're just going to leave the boat, fire a few last shots off at him, and here we go. And you'll see as well in a second that you do need quite a lot of stamina for the harpooning process, which again is why I said about, you know, you want to prioritize your stamina during this whole thing. So our boat should be about to crash on the water. All right, let's not kill him. We've got a really good hit on him right there. So here we go. We're in the shallow water now. Let's swim up here a little bit. He shouldn't lose interest just yet. We should be fine. And can we get him? Okay, I think I missed a couple times. He is coming. Okay. Come on, dude. Let's harpoon you. There we go, we got him. So when he's harpoon, pull him into the water here like this. All right, so we're going to pull him in. And you can see he's not got much health left, so this is pretty useful. Okay, and then we can go ahead and we'll switch to the mace. We'll just give him a hit or two. And boom, there we go. So now we're actually able to get all of the other drops you can see here in the water, right? You've got this uh, serpent meat and the serpent scales and stuff. Now, even in water like this, sometimes, I uh, don't know if we happen... Yeah, there we go. So there's a serpent scale there. You see I can pick this up still, right? But if it was a little bit deeper, there is a little sort of trick you can do. So you can get to some nearby land, and if you run and jump as you sink down into the water, you can spam E. And while you're spamming E, you'll be able to pick stuff up. You can also do this from your boat. So you can jump off your boat, land in the water, and then be spamming E to get things that are a bit lower down in the ocean. Um, so these here, we can just go ahead and pick them up. And then let's get on the boat and see what we got. Uh, so we got uh, nine serpent scales from this guy. Did we get this? Maybe I had a few on me. I'm going to check that. I'm going to put on screen right now the drop rates for serpent scales that you guys can get from a single serpent. I'd also like to just quickly mention I did research it and uh, the serpent trophy, to the best of my knowledge, does in fact sink. Uh, so uh, if you want to get the serpent trophy, this is another time when you will have to harpoon it onto land or at least into the shallow water in order to pick that up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is place down a workbench and uh, go ahead and repair our boat because obviously it takes a lot of damage during this whole process. And then it's up to you. I mean, you can sail out and try and repeat the process and do more or you can sail home. What I'm going to do now 
guys. I'm going to sail home and I'm going to talk about what you can do with your drops because there is now, since the Hearth and Home update, a new way you have to go about cooking the serpent meat. Uh, I will also take a look at the serpent scale shield, of course. Okay, so let's have a look at what all our efforts were actually for today and what we can do with the different drops being, of course, the serpent scale and the serpent meat. So first of all, the serpent meat. This has a couple of different uses, really. Uh, first of all, what you are going to need to do in order to cook it is make one of these iron cooking stations uh, you can see here. Now, in order to uh, get one of those to cook, actually, I didn't know you could place this on the floor. I just placed that, but yeah, apparently you can. So you can place a couple of campfires below it, just like this, or you can place a hearth underneath it. Uh, to unlock the hearth, instantly, if you're not sure how to do that, you need to place down a stone cutter. So we place that down here. Usually it unlocks a ton of new recipes, and one of those is, of course, the hearth. And the recipe for that is just you need the stone cutter nearby, and you need 15 stone. Uh, but either way, uh, once you've got this, you can then hang the serpent meat on there. So basically, the serpent meat is heavy, and it's too heavy to hang on uh, just a normal cooking station. So let me go ahead and cook that a sec, and then we'll talk about what we can do with it. Okay, here we go then, guys. We got ourselves some cooked serpent meat. And you'll see there that it's uh, unlocked a new crafting recipe, being the serpent stew. So if you go to a cauldron, uh, you'll see here, where's my serpent stew at? Uh, there we go. It needs uh, a level two cauldron. So the one upgrade I've got, the spice rack here, is enough. Again, full cauldron guide on my channel if you guys are interested. Um, but you can see there, it also requires one mushroom to honey. And it gives you a health of 80, which is insane for this stage of the game. And one of the reasons why it is kind of worth it in the long run to actually kill the serpent. And a stamina of 26, which is also very good for a food that is a predominantly health food, a stamina of 26 is pretty decent. As for the serpent meat itself, you see here, if you just eat it, it actually gives you 70 health and a 23 stamina. So even without making it into the stew, it's pretty good. I still would recommend you make it into the stew. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we can do with the serpent meat, which is very nice. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the uh, serpent shield. So to make the serpent shield, we've got to have the forge. And uh, if we scroll down here, let's find the serpent shield. Here you see what we need for it. So you need four iron and 10 fine woods. Let me get that stuff and then we'll look at its statistics. Okay, so with those uh, materials now, we can go ahead and craft up the serpent shield. And uh, if I go to upgrade over here, you see that the serpent shield is an upgradable item as well. Um, and it's not too expensive in terms of the serpent scales you need. So you can get eight or nine of the um, serpent scales from each uh, time you kill a serpent. And uh, so the first one, you know, is probably going to give you like one, but then each time you upgrade it, it's not too bad. Uh, so let's have a little look at that shield real quick and let's compare it to what we were previously using as a similar sort of shield which was the bone shield so uh, let's have a look at these so the bone shield of course has been upgraded to level uh, two and uh, you can see there it's got a block armor of 38 block force of 105 movement speed down by 20 percent um, so movement speed only down 15 percent here for the serpent scale and has a block force of 100 but of course it hasn't been upgraded whereas this one has uh, as for the block armor 60 so much higher right 60 at level one compared to 38 here at level two uh, and then it's got like you know the, the durability and it's got a weight of five not really important but yeah so this is a fantastic shield and uh pretty useful particularly uh, if we're going to be doing the bone mass fight soon this might be a shield you might want to use for that or for other things so uh, yeah that's what we do with our very cool drops that we get from the serpent so guys time for a quick fireside chat just to say that it's actually my birthday on the 18th of october and it's my 30th birthday so i've got a lot of like family events and stuff coming up for that and it does mean i will be taking a few days off of youtube so i'm sure you guys will forgive me for that while i'm off uh, celebrating and having a good time and stuff uh, but it does mean that the next episode after this might be a little delayed so i'm going to put publish this video on uh, saturday evening uh, my time and i'm going to try my best to get the next one up on tuesday for you guys uh, so hopefully i can do that on the tuesday it might be the wednesday but uh, yeah i just wanted to keep you in the loop and say thank you so much to everyone who has supported the series it's really lovely to see all of the comments that come in and uh, you know the series is going great and i'm really really enjoying it with you guys it's been a great journey so far so thank you to you all uh, the dad jokes are of course coming i just wanted to mention that and as always say thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one what happened when i told the sea serpent a joke he was hysterical what's the serpent's favorite game snakes and ladders i can't remember the joke about the leviathan which is a shame because it was a kraken joke what do you call a serpent that builds things a boa constructor what's the sea serpent's favorite tv show monty python why don't serpents drink coffee it makes them viper active